And so back about a year ago, I had a prophetic dream that we were somewhere, I was somewhere with my family um, and the church staff and we were going swimming and we were hanging out in a body of water and there was a huge iceberg behind us. And so this iceberg was just sitting there and next thing you know, as I'm facing the other way, from behind me, I hear a cracking. I hear a loud cracking. And then I look and I see the iceberg begin to fall it slips and then it slips again and then I turn to my husband and the church staff as we're hanging out in the water and I said here it comes and then next thing you know the iceberg fell and then all of a sudden waves of water came and they started throwing us around we were being thrown around but the entire time our head was being kept above water we were we weren't drowning I didn't feel afraid I felt as though when I saw the iceberg crack in the dream, I remember feeling like I knew it was coming and I knew that whatever was coming was going to have to do with God's glory coming in time harvest, shaking the harvest loose. It had to do with souls that are going to be brought in and the glory that was going to come from the waves. And so fast forward, a year goes by, we're coming into the pandemic and, uh, the Lord begins to speak to me all these different visions before Pentecost Sunday in preparation. And so in preparation for Pentecost Sunday, the Lord's telling me all these things. He gives me a vision of fire falling upon the earth, the entire earth. Then he gives me a vision of the ground and water bubbling up and just slowly bubbling up and flowing onto the ground. It's beginning to cover the earth. Then he gave me a vision of waves. Fast forward to today. Um, I was in my prayer and devotion time and the Lord gave me the, uh, the vision again of the waves, just the waves, no anchor, just the waves. And I said, okay, God, I said, I said, why are you reminding me of the vision of the waves? And he said, because the waves are coming. And I said, okay, what do you need us to do? Because that's what I always do. He will tell me. Just like I did with the, the, the storm is coming, I said, okay, God, what do we need to do? He said, buckle up and tighten up. Buckle up means hold on, the boat's gonna rock, and tighten up means save your pennies, watch your money spending, and pay attention and be careful during this time. And so I released that as you know, my part of the vision where the Lord was giving me the answer to my question. And so I asked him about this vision. I said, Lord, you gave me this vision a while ago and of just the waves and I've just been kind of holding on to it. And he said, I said, so what do you need us to do? So what, what are we supposed to do? And he said, get ready, brace yourself. And I said, okay. He said, without his presence, we cannot brace ourselves. And we need his presence. And he said his presence will not come without worship and pure worship and pure devotion. And he said, so tell everyone that to get ready and to brace themselves because the waves are coming. It, we're coming into the storm now. The waves are coming. They're getting ready to show up. We need to get ready and we need to brace ourselves. Hey, this is Dana Coverstone. I'm a pastor. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a patriot. I love this country. And uh, I can confirm the first part of what I'm about to tell you because I told some men at a prayer group uh, back in December, second or third week of December. But I want to share three specific dreams that I've had recently, uh, going back to December. Two that I've had this week, both, both Monday and last night, Monday and Tuesday night. Because I believe, number one, they are prophetic. Uh, the first one that I had has come explicitly true based on the events of March through June, <clears throat> the month in which we're living. And uh, I do not claim to be a prophet by any means. I understand, though, that some dreams and visions by their nature have a prophetic tendency to them. But I do believe I've seen things, uh, both that have happened as relevant by the first dream that I had, and some things that I've seen recently. So you can take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. You can pray about it. You can think about it. Uh, but I believe that I have a warning uh, for the country, a warning for rural America, a, rural, uh, a, a 
a warning for America overall. But here's what happened. Back in December, I woke up, I had a dream, and in that dream, I saw a calendar starting January 2020. And it was being flipped, and I saw January, I saw February, I saw March. And when March came up, the hand held it, and I saw the fin a finger underline the month of March, and then tap it three times. So underline the month of March, tap it three times. So to me, it was emphasis. Something's going to happen in March. And then I saw April, May, June. And when June came, the hand underlined June again and tapped it three times. Then, in the vision, I saw people marching. I saw protests. I saw people wearing masks. I saw lines going into hospitals. I saw um, typical medical doctors with needles or, 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 or syringes. I saw people on ventilators. I saw people who were very, very sick, very, very ill. I saw newspaper headlines trumpeting thousands of people getting sick. I saw um, ambulances just flying down roads. I, and then I saw... I saw cities on fire. I saw buildings being burned. I saw protesters with masks. Uh, I saw people who were, had their fists in the air, people who were yelling and screaming, angry as at, just at the world. <clears throat> I saw courthouses. I saw state houses surrounded. I saw people who were mad at the world. Uh, I, saw, I saw guns, shotguns specifically put in the air, held like this. And I saw barriers within cities. Um, and I told several men in my church about this, and I can confirm who those men were, and they'll confirm that what I'm telling you is what I told them. I saw absolute chaos. And the other thing I saw was vultures flying over large cities. And not just the ones that were burning, but I saw vultures flying over the cities, and I saw smoke rising, and I saw, I saw people fearful. I saw people terrified. I saw people inside their homes and looking out the windows, the curtains of their windows, with guns in their hands because... There was absolute fear. Then I heard the words, brace yourself, brace yourself. So since December, I've been hearing those words, brace yourself, brace yourself. Um, January, February came, didn't seem too much. I reminded the men of the dream. And then in March, boom, COVID-19 hit. And things started shutting down. Churches were shut down. Business was shut down. The economy shut down. Uh, then we began to see the protests starting in, Mar in May in Minneapolis, and all those things began to go on. So where we are at the end of the primary election here in Kentucky, and now there's talk of more shutdowns. I just heard the governor uh, talk about schools opening back up and things of that nature. <laughs> but the things that I saw in a dream and vision back in December are the same things that I watched in the news almost every day since March through June. All this time I kept hearing, brace yourself, brace yourself. Um, I spend time in prayer. I spend time in the Word. I'm a pastor. And it's not just my job. It's something that I enjoy doing, I love doing. And I'm very interested in the news around the world. I read 40 newspapers a day from all around the world. I, I keep up with news uh, in other parts of the, of, of the, the nations better sometimes than I hear here because it's hard to know who to trust. But I get news from all over the world, all around the world, from both liberal and conservative sources. Um, I'm very well read. I'm very understanding of how nations work. Uh, I've traveled quite a bit, and I'm not just making these things up. I can confirm what I have said. And with that in mind, on Monday night, I had another dream. And it woke me from my bed. I made notes about it. I shot some video of myself, just making sure I can remember. But here's what I saw I saw a calendar. Start with the calendar. And as I was having this, the calendar was up, a white figure appeared. And it, it, to me, it was, it was a rep, representing God, the Holy Spirit, something pure, something righteous, something true, something holy, because there was nothing, um, nothing sinister about it, nothing evil. But I heard the voice say, part two, part two. And I saw June go up. I saw July, I saw August, and then I saw September. And I saw the finger underneath the word September, and I, like emphasizing it, and tapped it three times. And then I saw October come up, and then I saw November. And this is when it got real to me in the dream. I think the intensity, uh, according to my Fitbit, when I woke up, my heart rate was about 180. So that was Monday night. It was also a night that I woke up not feeling very well at all. I was up during the night, not feeling well. But anyway, 
The minute the finger underlined November three times, instead of tapping it, I saw a fist ball up and it hit the calendar. And literally, the calendar exploded into the wall. The numbers seemed like they were 3D and they were falling, they were just flying everywhere. And there was a cloud of chaos that started. And then the next thing I saw was I saw, I saw armed protesters. I saw fighting in the streets. I saw people pummeling one another. I saw businesses shuttered and shut up. I saw, I saw schools closed. I saw schoolrooms with cobwebs hanging in them and like things like papers falling off the wall and posters falling like no one had been in them for months. I saw banks, bank buildings with the roofs being taken off. And it looked almost like alien abduction because money was just flying through the roof into some type of like a vacuum cleaner. That sounds kind of strange, but I was watching wealth just being taken. I saw politicians in back rooms. Uh, making deals with people, pat, you know, patting people on the back and, and laughing and smiling and smirking. And I saw monuments. I saw, I saw Washington, D.C. burning. I saw Washington, D.C. blazing. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. I saw Chinese and Russian soldiers on the ground. And Russian soldiers were telling the Chinese soldiers to go and pick up these people, round up these people, secure this quadrant, secure this area. I saw blue helmets of the UN. I saw military things taking place. I also saw no sign of President Trump. I saw no sign of leadership in Washington, D.C. But the vultures that I had seen were now like gargoyles, and they were 10 feet off the ground, 10 to 15 feet off the ground. And they were just attacking people mercilessly. I saw people hiding in their homes and garages. I saw churches being burned. I saw homes being burned. I saw absolute chaos. And the fist punch on the November of 2020 is what got my attention. And then I heard the words again, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. That has been something that I have heard for almost, almost seven, well, seven months now. Starting once we get to July, it's going to be seven months. Um, and once again, I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not claiming, proclaiming, you know, just, we'll see what happens in November, through November, and see if I'm right about this. But I know when I hear God's voice. I know, I know how, what God's voice sounds like to me. I know when he speaks. And I know when I have a dream that I know is him. And the things that I was seeing, I don't say this to scare people, but I say this to warn people that there are some pretty sinister things coming down the pike. And not just for the lost, but for God's people as well. Uh, the second dream I had last night, and it woke me up. Uh, in this dream, uh, we just had a yard sale to help fund a, a team going to Ecuador this next year. And we had a yard sale. And I had asked our secretary to get us some change for that, for that, for that yard sale. So in the dream that I'm having, I walk to the bank. I walk into the bank to get some change. And on the door it says there's no change available. I saw the sign, it registered in my mind, but I walked on in, and the president of the local bank was at the teller station, and she had, she was going to be taking care of business. And I said, I need to get $10 and quarters for a yard sale, and she said, I'm sorry, but the U.S. Mint is no longer making currency, or making change, like pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars. We're not doing that anymore. I said, like, well, what do you mean? She said, they've stopped doing it. And I said, well, how are we going to be able to charge $1.50 for anything? And she said, prepare for hyperinflation and just charge $2. And then she said to me in the dream, oh, and by the way, $1 and $5 bills will follow soon after that. And then I heard those words, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. And I woke up, I wrote these things down. Um, I've never gone on video and recorded the dreams that I've had. And I, I hesitated to not do the one I had back in December. But everything I saw in that dream in December came true between March and June. When in the, in, in the dream I was showed March through June. And so I don't think I would be doing um, anyone a service if I don't share what I saw 
in these dreams and visions. And I believe that we're going to see not just a second huge wave of COVID between September, October, November, but we're going to see major things with the elections. We're going to see major chaos in our country. We're going to see troops in our cities. We're going to see the protests get even worse. We're going to see buildings burn. We're going to see what could only lead to civil war in this country. And so for my friends that are believers, I'm, here, I'm just going to share you what, what I think you need to hear. First of all, you need to be preparing food. You need to make sure you've got alternative forms of currency like silver or gold or whatever. I believe you need to have an ample supply of both guns and ammunition. And that's not just the Second Amendment fan in me coming out. That is the things that we're seeing. Uh, they're talking about defunding the police. That means one thing. You're on your own in a lot of areas. Uh, I also believe you need to be praying like you never prayed before. Make sure your family knows what's going on, where you are. Have some, some communication between your family about if certain things happen, if certain things go down. I'm not saying get off the grid, and I've never, ever said anything like this in my church. Um, I have said I, I believe things that this could happen, but I've never done what I'm doing right now. And I'm telling you that between September and November of this coming year, and you'll be able to check me, you know, if, if, if by the time we get November nothing's happened, or December 1st, man, you call, you call me on this and say, Dana Coverstone, you're an absolute idiot and a fool for saying those things. Go right ahead. But I realize I'm responsible for what I've spoken. But I also know what I sense, and I know the Holy Spirit's voice enough to know that what I've heard, I believe is going to happen. And what I heard in December happened between March and June. Not because I'm a prophet, but because dreams have a prophetic edge to them sometimes. I've been doing a whole series on dreams and visions. I'm going to finish that series up tonight on my, uh, at our church. And I'm going to talk about why dreams and visions are literally an extension of the spiritual gifts of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment, all those things are required for dreams. And I have prayed, Lord, show me what these things mean that I have seen. Show me how to interpret them and what they are. Uh... And right now as I speak this, it is, it is June 24th, Wednesday night at 5.30 p.m. in Burksville, Kentucky. I'm in my office at the church, Living Room Ministries in Burksville, Kentucky, sharing this. Not to scare you because I believe, you know, look, God gave the prophets of the Old Testament a lot of warnings. Not to scare people, but to prepare them for what was coming. And so I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you. Don't just throw my word away. Don't just think I'm some, some preacher trying to get people to come. That's not it either. Because look, the Bible says in the last days will be a great falling away. Jesus tells people to endure to the end. Make sure you endure to the end. Why? Because people won't endure sound doctrine. They're going to they're gonna hear something. You know, some are going to hear me and go, oh man, he is on drugs or something. I'm just telling you the dreams I've had. You can do with them. You can interpret them the way that you want to. But I'm going to declare that I believe we're going to see between September and November incredible, terrible, awful, nasty, bad things happen in this nation. And for the people who are not prepared for it, it's not just going to catch them, catch them in a bad place. It's going to destroy a lot of faith, a lot of hearts, a lot of relationships, a lot of people. It's going to, it, the aim is to kill this nation. Because right now we are a nation that stands in the way of a lot of the Antichrist principles like freedom. Liberty, justice, First Amendment, Second Amendment, the Antichrist doesn't want those things. And yes, I do believe the Antichrist is alive and well on planet Earth. And I don't, like, I, don't, I don't really care what people think about this video. You can call me whatever you want, you can say whatever you want about me, but wait till December 1st to say it. And if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to come out and say, folks, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I ate that night. I've never had two dreams like this. I've never had a part one, part two. Part one came fully true. And part two, I believe, will as well. So, heed my words, folks. Believers, stop messing around if you're not living for the Lord like you need to. Because the press, there, there's an olive press moment coming for the church in this country. An olive press moment. And we're going to get crushed and squeezed and pushed down. That's why I believe God keeps saying, brace yourself. He's saying this to me so I can say it to you. Brace yourself for the things that are coming. I said, so what do you need us to do? So what, what are we supposed to do? And he said, get ready, brace yourself. And I said, okay. He said, without his presence, we cannot brace ourselves. 
endure till the end no matter how hard it gets. I'm not giving up the faith that I have in Christ. I've come too far in this walk and too far in my life to do that. But I want to make sure that others don't make that mistake and don't just walk away from it. And I'm David Hughes. Uh, I know what Mr. Bill said. In December, we were um, in a prayer meeting, and that was uh, when Pastor Dana related to us the, the situation that we might be looking at in March through June of this year. So just here to confirm it. He said it. I heard it. And I'm not the only one. Okay. Hey, my name is Bill McLaughlin. I've been a member of Living Word Ministries in Burksville for better than 10 years now, I guess. Actually, I got here about a week after Pastor Dana got here. I've known this guy for a long time. Uh, he's <laughs> he's posted the contents of a dream online, and it's it's gone viral. Uh, this guy's not making this stuff up. He's had a lot of dreams in the past. He shared dreams over a period of time. Uh, none of them, I don't guess, were quite as specific as this one has been. But uh, this guy's a real deal. He's not making this up. This, this is, I know he hears from the Lord. I know he hears from him a lot better than I do. I wish I heard as well as he does. Uh, he hears from the Lord. This is genuine. Uh, I don't know what to make of it either. I, none of us really do. Now, neither you two are on Facebook either, are you? No. For the most part. So you all haven't been seen anyway. So if it had gone viral, you wouldn't have not. So you're confirming about a, a video, you you know. Viral means coronavirus to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only viral I'm in, you know, concerned with. Yeah. Your dreams were intriguing to me. And let me tell you why. Is because... There's some things that have been talked about here on this platform and with my mentor, Bernard Jordan. And we don't know you, you don't know us. But there were some things that you said in your video that just align with what I believe is true. What day? Because I think I got the dates right. What day was it you had these last dreams in June? Was it June the 22nd? I had that, uh, yeah, Monday night, June the 22nd, I had the part two of the one dream. And then that night, the uh, June the 23rd, I had the dream about the coins. Hmm. And one thing that you mentioned was you, you're sensing what was going on. I'm hearing from, I mean, there's thousands of people who are telling me, that they're having the same kind of dream. And I'm talking from every part of the community, uh, country, uh, rural, suburban, metropolis, black and white. I'm hearing from people who are having dreams, and they're saying, I've, I've dreamed the same kind of thing. I'm sensing the same kind of thing. And I'm hearing also that people are sensing there's something wrong, there's something not right in our country. And the, 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 I believe the Spirit of God is stirring some people. He's waking the body of Christ up all around our nation and encouraging us with not just dreams and visions, but that sense of warning, that sense to get prepared, and that, that sense to get ready for what's coming. And I, I've never been, I'm, I'm a nobody. Nobody knows me. Nobody knows my name. I'm a son of a God pastor. And uh, I, I shared the video on Facebook with 1,100 friends on my Facebook page. I never said, share this. I never said, hey, folks, look at this. I shared it out of a concern because the intensity of the dream that I had was so severe to me that I had to get this information out. The first dream I saw I shared with several men, including my son, in a prayer group with prayer night every, every Tuesday night. And we began to see things happen that lined up with the dream. So I had the second dream. I woke up, my heart rate was about 180 beats per, per minute. My, 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 my Fitbit told me that. And I, I was sweating. I was nervous. I just had to get the information down, so I wrote it down. And there was an urgency. And I, urgency. And so when I shared that on Facebook, I had no idea how far it would go because I shared it with 1,100 friends, and most of whom are pastors and missionaries and friends of mine or, or people I went from high school with, friends, people from my hometown. But it was out of the urgency of what I saw. And I just shared the video because I was, I was struck by it. I was... Um, my life got turned upside upside down by this dream, and I thought I got to get this out. I got to get this out. 
I had the second dream about, or the third dream about the coin shortage that Tuesday night, and I put it all together the, the next morning. You know, how many people watched a 15 minute video of a guy they'd never met or never heard of talking about bad stuff? And, and <laughs> so it had to be the sovereign hand of God because this thing has had millions of views. Mm-hmm. And I never intended that. I never thought that was possible. It, it's been seen in many countries. It's been translated into different languages. I, transcripts. I, I've got friends who live in Germany, and they, they called and said, we just saw a video that was sent to us. And I'm having people are saying that it's been forwarded to them and, and shared with them like 15 or 20 times a piece. And I, I don't know why, uh, because I'm just a pastor in the middle of nowhere. And I had a dream, and I put it on Facebook. And... And the sovereign hand of God touched it. And, and I'm hearing from people who said that dream resonated in my spirit. Or I've had dreams like that. Or I've just had a sense of something that's going on. And I'm hearing of, of prayer meetings. And I'm hearing of people, you know, getting things ready and prepared. But the, the biggest thing I'm hearing is that there are people getting saved. I had a friend back in Indiana. He's a counselor. He shared the video with a lady. He shared it with her son. Her son starts asking questions and gets saved. And that pastor friend of mine is going to be baptizing him here in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. That was out of nowhere. Um, yeah. I'm hearing this constantly from a lot of friends and ministers or, you know, around the nation, and uh, I'm just still overwhelmed by all of it because I, I keep emphasizing I'm not a prophet. I'm a pastor teacher. God uses me in the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discernment. Uh, I'm a spirit-filled, a similar to God pastor, and I've always kind of walked in that in that area. And a lot of folks want to call me a prophet, and I, I, I'm a pastor teacher, and I don't know why suddenly this moment came in my life. Now let's get into the dream that you had on the 22nd. This was, you posted on June the 24th, but you had it on the 22nd. Can you give us a, a summary of that dream on the 22nd? Sure. The first dream I had had, I saw the month of March and June highlighted on calendar. And on Monday night, June 22nd, I had the other dream, the second part of the dream, which lined up with the first one. And I saw a, a calendar appear. 2020 calendar, and it showed June where the first dream had left off, and I saw July and August and September flipped up against the wall, and I saw a finger that underlined the word September and then tapped it three times. And then I saw October flip, and finally it turned to November. And the index finger appeared again and underlined the, the word November. And then instead of tapping it three times, the, the finger became a fist that rolled up and just violently punched into that calendar on the wall, it was like the numbers came rushing off, and the, and the calendar kind of crushed back into the actual wall itself. And then suddenly, I was seeing uh, lines of people waiting in the hospitals. Uh, I, I saw lines that were like as long as city blocks, and I saw masks, and I saw people carrying oxygen tanks. Uh, I saw headlines stating that, that people were dying at incredible rates. And it was clear to me in the dream that something, it was, it was worse than COVID. It may have been a different strain or whatever, but it was different. I saw people helping each other to stand up in those lines getting to the hospital. Um, I, I saw crowds of protesters yelling, screaming. I saw violence like a hundred times greater than what I saw in my first dream. It was violence in the streets, cars being burned, and nothing like we've seen in, in the last several months. I, it, was, it was catastrophic. Cars being burned, properties being burned, homes being burned. And then I saw vultures. In the first dream, I'd seen vultures flying over major cities, especially Washington. But in this, this, this dream, the vultures appeared to be like gargoyles, and they had red glowing eyes, and they were about 10 to 15 feet off the ground, flying down and attacking people or with their claws or talons and, and biting. And then I saw explosions um, all over the map of the United States of America. And, and I knew in my spirit it wasn't nuclear, uh, but it, there was something going on. And then another thing I saw was law enforcement officers kneeling, but not like in the protests we've seen. This was a total surrender of their authority in, in, in the dream that I had. Then I was taken to Washington, D.C., and I was standing at the National Mall, seeing the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, and there were dark clouds and dark skies, but, but the, the, the memorials themselves were not, were not damaged, but they were dirty, almost as if it was soot and ash that, had, that kind of attached to them. They were just dirty. And then I saw the sky around the White House. It was dingy, dark, gray. There was flashes of lightning and explosions in the air. Uh, and one thing that stood out to me was that the White House was empty. The Oval Office, the curtains that the president would look out into the, into the area behind it, the, the curtains were closed. And the building was empty. 
I ask that if no activity on the ground, no secretaries, no cabinet members. Uh, but, I, but the Oval Office was literally empty. We had a leaderless uh, White House. We had a leaderless Washington, D.C. And then I saw a room uh, with a conference table and, uh, and current elected officials of high-ranking you know, places in the state. And, and there were briefcases on this table. And to me, briefcases are a 70s and 80s thing because people don't, don't use them anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, these senators were sitting there talking, and you could see, I could see out of the room into the, 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 area, the area outside of the room, and there were people running and screaming. There were fires, explosions, just chaos out there. But the men in this room, they were just very calm. They had no fear. Uh, there were no House of Representative members, nobody else, no Supreme Court. It was just senators. And then a former senator who had served in the Senate in years past, stood up, opened the briefcase, and began to hand out business envelopes to different one of the other senators in the room. And uh, they all looked at their watches calmly, not bothered by anything going on outside. Uh, they looked out the windows calmly, and finally they put their folders in the briefcases, locked them up, and uh, walked out of the room just kind of sneering and laughing and making, making comments, walking out into chaos as if there was no problem. And then I saw more flashes of explosions all around the nation. I saw protesters. I saw violence. Uh, and, and there was a white figure that appeared to me in the first dream. And at the end of that first dream, he said, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. And then that white figure appeared to me again. Uh, because I had been seeing, I had been seeing also uh, uh, Russian troops, Chinese troops, and blue United Nations helmets. They were not rounding up people, but I saw people gathering gatherings. Uh, I saw uh, transports of military vehicles, and I saw transports of, of tanks and things like that. All these were happening around me as this witness figure is coming up to me, and he says, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself, and endure to the end. Hmm. At that moment, I wake up, my heart rate was, I thought my heart was going to be down on my chest. I, I had covered the bed in sweat. And I was just beside myself. I jumped up, and I paced in the house, and uh, back and forth, and I prayed, and I made some notes, and I looked down, and the next night I had to dream about the coin shortage. Um, I dreamed I walked into a bank in our local community, and there was a sign on the door that said, no, we currently have no chance. And I walked in, and the bank teller, the president was the, the, was the uh, teller that day, and I said, I need to get $10 and quarters for a churchyard sale, something like that. And she said, well, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the National Mint's no longer making coins, and uh, we don't have any change. Uh, and I said, well, how can I charge a dollar fifty for something that I sell? And she said, well, you're just going to have to charge $2. It's hyperinflation. And, oh, by the way, ones and fives are next. And then I woke up, and I had been making some notes of what I had seen. And after I had that dream, I, I just tied all three together and realized, i got to get this message out. It was, that, it was that much on my heart. So on Wednesday, June the 24th, I, I, I sat down and just made that real quick video, and put it on. And I was a pastor doing that. I, I was a friend doing that. I was, I was hoping to get people's attention because I thought, I believe I saw something that was coming. The first dream, a lot of it, well, most all of it had come true. We saw the, the headlines for pandemics. We saw the sickness, the illness. We saw the riots. We saw the killing. We saw the, the, the people gathering around courthouses and state houses because of, of, uh, because of the laws and, and the shutdowns and lockdowns. So I thought, man, if that first one has come true, I I've got the responsibility to get this out there. Yeah. And by Friday afternoon, I was getting pictures sent to me from all over America from friends. A lady in Miami sent me a message, and she said, I was just at a drive through McDonald's in Miami, Florida, and there was a sign on the, on the drive through that said, we don't have change, or please have correct change, and there's a change shortage. And by Saturday, Sunday, my mailbox and inbox was full of pictures like that. And so I really think a lot of folks about the third part of the dream, or heard about the third part of the dream, and then went back and watched you know, the video of the first two. Uh, but I just felt that I had been, I saw something. And the intensity and the urgency in my spirit was, I've got to get this out there. I've got to say something. And I realized I put myself at great risk because for the rest of my life, everything I say on Facebook or even in my pulpit, everything I say will be scrutinized, it will be analyzed, it will be <laughs> criticized. Uh, but at the same time, I have heard from thousands of people who said, Pastor David, this resonates in my spirit. We know something's wrong. We know something big is coming. We know something really big is coming. And but so those encouragements have really, have really helped me, because there's been a lot of criticism, too, as you know. But 
people are, are it's resonating in the spirits of many believers, and they're starting to take action. Well, this is this is what I what I wanted to say, and um, because somebody would say. Okay, he's having these dreams. The protests have al already began. We already have COVID-19. So now he, he had a dream first in December. And okay, he didn't warn us about that. I, I don't even pay that too much attention because I do know how, how that can be, especially when you are receiving something and there's nothing around you that says that this is God. So you may share it with those that look to you. You may share it with those that, as a pastor, those that you pastor, but you don't really put it out there. But now after, then you get another message and it talks about the future in June. I can see why you shared it now and you're putting it out there now because you see now that God is communicating with you about America and about the future. So since you had the dreams, um, Pastor Dana Coverstone, have you received any more dreams or any more clarity about what you did dream since then that you can share with us? <laughs> no dreams about the specific things of the other dreams I had. I did have one dream about wolves. And in that dream, I saw a field of wolves. They were dark bird. They were quiet, sleeping out in an area. And I saw a very, very dark figure. He walked into the area, and he had a whip. And he suddenly began to whip all of these wolves. And as the wolves were getting all uh, beaten on and hurting, and they were nipping and uh, crying out and, and just being attacked, their eyes began to grow red. But they would, not, they would not attack him. They would not try to get close to him. Obviously, he was their master, and he, he, he kept beating the wolves until he had beaten every single one of them. And then, all the wolves came to kind of, they didn't sit down, but they kind of stood at attention around him in a big circle. And he put his arm out to the right, and then he just spun uh, clockwise and just pointed at, the, at all the landscape around him. And then he said in a very, very loud voice, go into the city. And those wolves took off running as fast as they could. They were growling, they were nipping each other. And they were heading all directions. And now I'm standing in front of a, 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 almost like a video screen of TV screens, hundreds of screens. And I'm seeing uh, missionaries, preachers, pastors, friends that I know. I recognize them. I saw men. I saw women. I saw black. I saw white. I saw every race. I saw every color. Every nation represented. And they were preaching a very, very hard and aggressive gospel. And they were sweating from, from, from preaching that hard gospel so hard. It was almost like steam coming off of their other heads. And I know that the intensity of what they were doing. Um, but in the dream, I knew they were just preaching the word as hard as they could. And they were preaching about sin. They were calling certain things sin. They were, they, they were coming against uh, immorality in the church and, and, and different relationships in the church and, and abortion. And then the, the scene changes. I'm in my own pulpit in my own church, and I'm preaching to my people that I know. I recognize some of the people in the church. And most of the people were, that were in, in my service were sitting in the back. And they were not paying attention. They were sleeping. They were quiet. They were looking at their, their fitness or their watches or playing with their phones. And yet there was a small core group of people near the front, near the, altar, the pulpit of the altar area, and they were praying, and they were just praying consistently while everybody else in the back was not paying attention. And then suddenly, I'm back watching the screens again. And I realized that every pastor who was preaching was addressing the same kind of crowd. There was people sitting in the chairs and the pews, but they weren't listening or paying attention. And there were a multitude of people in the pews and chairs with just a few at the front that were listening and praying. And suddenly we hear howls, or I hear howls out in, in, outside the church. And as I'm watching, the people at the front turn around and know that the wolves are out there, and they begin to pray more intensely. And the wolves make their way in at the scratching of the doors, and they start walking through the chairs and the pews. And the people in the back are not paying any attention at all. They're just, what? They're just they're so caught up with, with, with their, their own world, their own life, they're not seeing the wolves. And the wolves are jumping up in the chairs and the pews, and they're sitting beside these people. And they're just nuzzling up to them like a, like a dog would or a cat would. And, and as, as the, the preachers keep preaching, and, and they're, they're getting harder and harder in the gospel, suddenly... The wolves begin, their eyes begin to grow red, and, and they begin to rub up against the people. They begin to agitate, irritate the ones that aren't listening. And finally, as the people in those chairs, their eyes begin to turn red, but not like the LED red lights like the wolves had, but like angry red. Almost like they'd not slept for days, but they were mad, they were angry. And all of a sudden, they start yelling, shut up, quit preaching. You know, don't, we don't want to hear that. Stop saying it. That's not right. That's not fair. You can't call that sin. I can do what I want to do, those things. Now, people were getting angry. People were leaving. 
uh, some were mocking, and that's when the wolves came up to the pulpit area. And they circled the pulpit, and they nipped at the legs of the preachers, including mine, they started biting our legs, and the pastors, we just kept preaching the gospel as hard as we could, even though we were in great pain. And then I saw the screams again, and I'm right back there watching those things, and the other preachers are being pulled to the ground by those multiple wolves, and they're being mauled. And, and yet they just kept preaching the word as hard as they could, and they, and they wouldn't stand down. And the last image I saw was a, a blood-covered pastor. It was scarred, leaning on pulpit, still preaching as hard as he could while the wolves were trying to just take him to the ground. And this scene changed again. I'm, I'm seeing a courtroom. I'm seeing judges with gavels, and they're beating the gavels on, on, the, on, their, on the, the area where they sit on the bench. And they're telling people, they're telling these guys to stop preaching the gospel and to stop, stop condemning certain lifestyles and to stop doing this and stop doing that, to stop demonizing abortion. And I kept coming up kept coming up in, 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 the, in, the, in the things that they were being told and said. And we just basically said, stop being discriminatory against people's choices and lifestyles. And, and then I saw oak, the big oak wooden uh, pulpits in so many of our, of our churches from the early 1900s and, and the middle of the 1900s. There's a beautiful oak, the large, uh, this wonderful, uh, solid oak. They were being uh, chopped down with axes. I saw the acrylic and the, and the plexiglass. Uh, pulpits, they were just being beaten down with hammers. And, 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 and I, I saw people surrounding preachers and Christians and believers, and they were throwing things. And they were mocking those people who, were, who had been Christians. And there was, there was persecution, both in the pulpit, there was persecution in the courtroom, there was, there was persecution outside. And, and, and when I woke up after this one, it was once again, heart rate was high, I was feeling it. And, but I realized at the moment that the primary meaning of that dream was there's going to be an uprising of people who used to come to church, who are sitting in our churches right now, and they've never served Christ. They, or they've heard the gospel, they just, you know, they just ignored it, they, they, they rebelled against it. And they've fallen so deep and so far that they're actually going to be the ones that fight against the word of God as it's preached. So from within the church, there's going to be people rising up who finally say, I've had it with this. That's not, you know, they've been teaching this for 100 years or whatever. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to buy it. So, but what I saw was the opposition to the message. And, and my encouragement to pastors who are preaching the word is to keep preaching the word. Keep calling sin, sin. Keep calling, what, you know, keep calling things what they are. We've we got to stop sugarcoating the gospel. We've got, to stop, we've got to stop worrying about who we offend. We've got, we know the cross offends. We know the gospel offends. Mm. But that dream of all the dreams that I've had troubled me the most because I saw people that I know friends that I know, and they were just being attacked viciously by those wolves. In that dream, I was being attacked viciously by the wolves. But we know it's coming, and that persecution is, is, is coming as well. Because now, that spirit of Antichrist is, is so large right now.